Hi, so this is a well-known cartoon by Gary Larson called The Far Side. As we see, the anthropologist scientists are approaching a tribe of the primitives. While the primitives take all their modern high-tech toys and scream in great turmoil, anthropologists, anthropologists, and they run away to hide all of those artifacts in order to give the interviews that the anthropologists want to hear. So. That's not the point nowadays. The point nowadays is that I will try to derive modern day secret societies or the Templi Orientis, the Temple of the Ascending Flame, Dragon Rouge and so on from something more primitive without of course discarding the metaphysical aspects of it over proving that there is no actual uh, difference in between the mechanics behind it. So this is a book by Brian Hayden, The Power of Ritual and Prayer Stories, Secret Societies and Origins of Social Complexity. I will read just a fragment of it from the first part, The Secret, trying to find very common, uh, let's say, uh, topoi or stasis that are running through the, through the modern and primordial secret societies down to, let's say, upper paleolithic at most. So, dynamics, the raison, raison d'etre, their characteristics according to ethnographic accounts. Secret societies embodied some of the most awe-inspiring events. Those in high positions claimed to hold the secrets of the universe and of life, performed supernatural feats, able to control spirits, confer wealth, bring the dead back to life, exercise the possessed and perform supernatural feats. Well, this may be true, but the issue starts where is the border between charlatanry and realized potential? Where is the thin line, as Austin Osman Spur once said, between obsession or psychosis and genius, that is inspiration? Some secret societies often build elaborate special structures. Organizations may be the precursor both of stage magic shows and institutionalist religions, and they may have played critical roles in the foundation of complex political organizations and shh, secret societies, masonry for example. So the primordial forces will to control them, the stage of breaking from the animal consciousness, the womb of nature and so on so on. So uh, let us see. As early as the 1840s, Paul Kane recorded it as Hamatsa, a Hamatsa ceremony and used the term secret societies to refer to exclusive ritual organizations on America's northwest coast with costly initiations. Members were usually sworn to keep the secrets of their society's power on pain of death. Secret societies occurred in tribal and chiefly societies and in some cases persisted into modern industrial societies. So beware your uh, tribalism in Astrum Argentum, for example. Now, we're not the same tribe, apparently. So, um, the potential importance of secret societies has gone largely unrecognized in archaeological theoretical worlds. Religious sodalities in broader cultural dynamics, as in the American Southwest, sodalities so association by profession, especially as ritual means for reducing social tensions and binding amalgamated kinship groups together in the same community. Interesting. Okay. Let's move forward. Developments. Why are secret societies important? Secret societies are recognized in their own communities as being important and powerful. Well, how is Telema or the Templi Orientis important to politics of the modern world? It's not. Often embodying the most elaborate traditions of their cultures in terms of ritual, art, music, food, dance, costumes and languages. All interwoven. Second, secret societies only appear to emerge among trans-egalitarian complex hunter-gatherers and subsequent agricultural tribal or chiefdom societies, extending back only to Upper Paleolithic in exceptional circumstances, perhaps detected back in Middle Paleolithic. So, what's the reason? The most powerful members of communities generally dominate the highest ranks of secret societies. In the case of Telema, they're not powerful, they're just deluded. And because they control significant resources, that's a key, and means to advance their own hegemonic control in the community, another key, modern secret societies are usually powerless, constitute powerful driving forces for cultural changes, including major changes in ideology, cultural values and beliefs, as well as new socio-political relationships, including an increased centralization of power.
Hmm. Four, secret societies generally include members from different kinship groups and even communities, thus establishing a supra-kinship and supra-community level of organization, control and power. If you have some conspiracy theories, fearing the secret societies, rest assured they're so disorganized as a rabble that uh, and they're made of useless uh, individuals, usually, as I have witnessed many times. So, uh, secret societies are important because they constitute a major means for extracting surplus resources, like the Gypsy Kingdom of Telema, <laughs> and wealth from community members and other sectarians, and for concentrating these surpluses in the hands of few individuals. Moreover, they only appear to have occurred in areas capable of producing significant surpluses. Now, don't get me wrong, I was not never a member of Order Templi Orientis. I observed them with a laughter and smile on my face as an individual practitioner of magic, uh, not relying on those uh, idiots uh, by kin or association in the, any kind of society apart from society of gods above and spirits below. Supernatural justification for these levies and physical means of enforcing requisitions typified many secret societies, which were false, which were true. Six secret societies may have led to the development of some of the most notable prehistoric ritual centers and ultimately to the formation of regional state religions. Community building. So, da 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 da. Seven secret societies play important roles in lower or mid range archaeological theory. They had ideological characteristics, which helped to explain the changes in iconography that characterize key periods in archaeological record in certain areas. Now, da 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 da. What is the secret? One of the misconceptions need to be addressed from the outset. Instills visions of clandestine meeting by people whose membership and activities are carefully concealed from the public scrutiny, raising your inner paranoia. In fact, this is not what is secret in secret societies. It's the hidden exist existence for these ritual organizations of membership that was kept secret. Everyone was usually well aware of the existence of these societies and knew who belonged to them. Members even flaunted the fact that they had been initiated and they usually put on public displays to everyone in their communities with their arcane and profane powers. Look, Telema Instagram, for example. The real secret was the ritual knowledge that members claimed was the key to the supposed arcane supernatural powers. Now, I may have some magical skills, but watching those idiots, usually they have none. But they're very well hidden. Now, I don't claim any supernatural powers. It's natural empirical magic. Nevertheless, I want nothing to do with them. The most important secrets were known only by the highest ranking members of secret societies, technical magic, miracles, and all that. Observed among the Hopi, the secrecy was internal, not external. Behind the secret door, da 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 mm, Tribal initiations. Role, taking warrior role, priest role, shaman role, and all that. High-ranking individuals. Uh, da, 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 da. So, you may say that I'm begrudged because, for example, I'm a precariat. However, I'm not because I'm satisfied with my life. And uh, I use every opportunity to isolate myself from idiots. Therefore, I'm on good skin and parole with the divin divinities above and I don't have to deal with idiots anymore. So, uh, neither am I included nor excluded. <laughs> However, we have the... Uh, I was offered many times to join. I rejected all the offers by the standards of my spine. So power-oriented societies, secret societies as described in the most prominent ethnographies. So Hamad, Sapporo, Ekpo, Sukhe societies. High-ranked secret societies, smaller, weaker, upset, wannabe ephemeral secret societies that constantly appeared and disappeared as on the plains in the outward coast. So every secret society starts a bit like a little bit of a sect gathering resources and their initiates. And some of those people may have valid supernatural skills in contact with spirit, but most of them are merely based on some flawed preconception of joining the elite. Militaristic secret society, one tribe fighting with the other. We are the secret tribe. Curing and fertility societies, benefit of community, defensive secret societies when they're overridden. So Judaism started as a defensive secret society. 
Mm, no, general context. Overrunning the world with that bloody crucified thing. No, mm, if you still somehow have no ideas how it developed into various magical secret societies and off sprinters, groups, and all that, you didn't join the church of the sub genius. However, hail the gods and um, have fun. <laughs> Thank you.